Hi guys, Dane here, and today I want to do something a little bit different. Let's just tuck that up there so that the uh, backdrop looks beautiful. So I was asked by Mad Mystical Monk if I could talk a little bit more about why I'm vegan. By the way, his YouTube name is now Mad Misanthropy Books, which he will be happy because I have some books about this as well. But I just thought this would be an interesting thing to talk about because I haven't really talked about it with you guys. And... Basically, I've been, well, I was a vegetarian before I was vegan. I turned vegetarian when I was about 15. I'd actually wanted to be vegetarian before then, but because my mum cooked all of the food, she basically said, I'm not cooking you anything different to what I'm already cooking for myself. And so I was kind of too young to really fend for myself, I guess. And then when I got to about 15, it got to the point where I could say to her, well, that's okay, you cook your food and I'll cook my food. And so I started cooking my own meals and I did this for about three or four weeks and then she realized that, you know, it wasn't just a phase, it was something I was serious about. And so she then started cooking me vegetarian meals as well. And actually she still eats quite a lot of vegetarian stuff too because things like, you know, the corn sausages and the corn pieces and stuff like that, it's, it's got less fat in it than actual meat. And she's on a diet so she eats quite a lot of the vegetarian stuff because it's, it's good for her basically. So when I went vegetarian it was purely for the animals. I mean, like I say, I was 15 years old. I didn't know a huge amount about the world and the way that meat production and all that kind of stuff works. But I did know... You know, the bacon comes from a pig. I like pigs. Don't want to eat them unless I have to. And I think that's the point of vegetarianism and veganism is that you don't have to, you know. So yeah, I've been vegetarian for over 10 years. And recently I started writing a novel called Meat, which is set on a factory farm. I've actually finished the first draft of that now. And while I was doing that, I started doing a lot more research into the way that meat and whatnot is produced. And this is where I really started to see things about dairy farming. Dairy farming is really bad. And egg farming and things like that as well I mean I always kind of thought it's okay because you know I eat free-range eggs and so it can't be that bad you know I'm doing my bit for the animals but the, the dairy industry in, in, in particular is really bad so what happens in the dairy industry is obviously cows to be delivering milk they need to have just given birth so they have to repeatedly impregnate the cows which is basically rape you know but they have to repeatedly impregnate the crap the cows if it's uh, a male that's born the male is either shipped off to become veal or quite often the male is just killed and just chucked in a pit basically uh, just because they need the mother to keep on being re-impregnated to keep on giving milk in terms of things like layer eggs as well and broiler chickens in general which is the chickens that you know we eat they're pumped full of antibiotics chickens in particular are pumped full of antibiotics it's actually in america it's 80 percent of all antibiotics used are used in factory farms and that's not because the animals are ill and need antibiotics to make them better it's actually just to promote growth so this is one of the main reasons for why we have decreased efficiency of antibiotics and why people are warning that we could all be wiped out by a superbug i mean people are saying that basically we're looking at what you know civilization was like before penicillin you can't even do surgeries for example if people have cancer it's not the cancer that's going to kill them anymore it's going to be the fact that they get infections and we have no working antibiotics to continue to treat those infections my big mistake was that i thought by being vegetarian i was stopping animals from being killed and that's not the case by being vegetarian you're having fewer animals killed but you are still, animals are still being killed as a byproduct in the, you know, the dairy industry and the egg industries. And even if not, they're being kept in horrific conditions. So I did more and more research of this when I was writing my book called Meat. And I'm going to share some of the books and the documentaries and the YouTube channels that I recommend for that. But before I do that, I guess I want to talk about the arguments against veganism because this was really why I hadn't become a vegan because I'd heard all of these various arguments against it but actually when you start to look into it none of them make any sense so you know there's the basic argument that oh well we need milk for you know calcium to stop us getting osteoporosis or whatever it is and then you look at the studies and people who drink milk are more likely to have osteoporosis than vegans. Another one of the arguments, humans were have always eaten meat. Well, if that's the case, then humans 20,000 years ago used to rape and kill each other. Does that make raping and killing each other morally acceptable? You know, people say, well, what would happen to all the animals if we all switched to veganism? Well, that's never going to happen, and we all know that's never going to happen. What vegans tend to call for is a, you know, a gradual societal change. And you can do your bit just by having, you know, 
maybe do one day a week vegan or something to try it out and start trying some different recipes and switching things up and you start to develop a taste for it like for me I wouldn't want to eat like real cheese to be honest I don't eat too much vegan cheese either but I wouldn't want to eat it because I know all of the misery that's associated with going into production never mind the fact that in milk and cheese from dairy you also get things like pus blood gets in there as well there's some really horrible stuff in just dairy milk the point of milk is for cows to wean baby cows and pump them full of as many, you know, like, it's like fats and stuff to pump them full of, you know, all the stuff they need to grow from being a tiny baby cow to being a massive dairy cow. You know, when you think about where milk comes from, you're, you're drinking stuff that's meant for a baby cow. You're not a baby cow, bro. Processed meats are actually on the same level of carcinogen, according to the World Health Organization, as cigarettes. They're as bad for you as cigarettes, effectively. I mean, the three reasons that people give for going vegan. So I'm vegan for the animals, which apparently makes you attractive to women. I've learned this since. But for me, it's just an ethical thing. I just, I love animals. I probably love animals more than people. So I just don't want to eat them if I can avoid it. I don't want to cause them unnecessary suffering. Uh, but so you've got that's reason number one, vegan for the animals. You've got vegan for your health. It's really good for your health. It helps you to lose weight. It makes you much less likely to have things like heart attacks. It makes you live longer. It's something like eight years longer that you live if you're a vegan as opposed to a vegetarian or a meat eater. Now this leads to some other interesting things because people who are specifically vegan for their health won't eat animal products but they might be fine with wearing fur for example whereas I did some research on the fur industry some of the worst shit I've, I've ever seen has been in fur industry videos like I've seen things in factory farms where they literally they take the male egg chicks and literally throw them living through a meat grinder just to kill them because they only want the female chicks because only the female chicks can lay eggs so again, if you're buying eggs, you're supporting the egg industry, and so you are causing the death of these animals, you know. Um, but in the fur industry, I've seen like coyotes been skinned alive, literally lying there on the floor, and you can see they're just blood and tissue. They have no skin left. And those are used quite often for coats. If you see those coats with the fur around the hoods, that's from coyotes, that's basically dog fur. And people get annoyed about the Yulin Dog Festival, and then go and eat like bacon. Pigs are more intelligent than dogs. Pigs are as intelligent as a three-year-old child. So it's just crazy. It's really hypocritical to care about the dogs being eaten at the Yulin Meat Festival and not to care about pigs being eaten, for example. The third reason, so we have the ethical reason for the animals, the health reason, and the third reason is the climate. So meat production and factory farms are the largest cause of greenhouse gas emissions. This basically means if you care about the planet and you want to fight global warming, the single best thing you can do is to stop eating meat and animal products. Even better than switching from a car to an electric car or rigging your house up with solar panels or something like that. Not to mention the fact that forests are cut down in the Amazon to make room for soy being grown. Which, by the way, people then point and say, well, aha, you're a vegan, so you're causing deforestation because you're making soy be grown in, in the Amazon rainforest and it's like well yeah but 90% of soy or whatever percentage it's a very high percentage goes to feeding animals the most efficient use of food is to eat the food instead of to give it to an animal and then to eat the animal so we actually have enough food in the world to feed everybody without any world hunger or starvation but the problem is is instead of giving that food we give it to animals we quite often in places like India where there is widespread poverty we grow food there and then import it to the United States or to the United Kingdom or Australia or wherever it is feed it to the animals and then eat the animals and it's like but the food is there and the people need the food it's crazy it is crazy once you start to look into it there, there really is like no justif justification to not be a vegan now it's not my goal with this video to be militant I'm just trying to answer the question of why I am vegan but at the same time, all of these arguments all come together into like a perfect storm, you know? People are like, where are you going to get your protein? And then you look at like tofu versus beef or whatever. And quite often the vegan alternatives actually have more protein in it. You never hear about people having protein deficiencies and having to go to hospital. You have vegan strongmen. One of the strongest men in the world is a vegan. Vegan athletes. It's ludicrous, to be honest. In the same way that... In fact, the, the, the funny thing is as well is a lot of the people who go, oh, well, what about your protein or whatever? And these are people who like live on like chicken nuggets and chips. And it's like, 
Well, what about your bloody vitamin C, mate? A thing about the vegan diet as well, and a vegan approach to life, really, because that's more what it is. It's just about doing as little harm as possible. So people will say, well, what about your soybeans, you know? Your soybeans, there are animals that get killed in the agriculture there. And that is true. There is uh, There are statistics out there, I don't know them off the top of my head, but there are statistics that show how many animals are killed per se, per acre of soybean plantation because things just get run over by machinery or you know as it's getting harvested or planted there is damage done you know however this comes back to again the fact that 90% of the soy production goes to meat so by eating meat you're eating not only the animal that is being killed that's going onto your plate but you're also doing more damage to the animals that are in the fields where the soy is being produced so even if you accept you know, well, as a vegan, I am inadvertently causing the death of X number of animals per year through the production of soy. It's still better than producing nine times as many deaths of those animals by then eating meat. And people seem to have this idea of like, oh, you can't save any animals, so it's pointless to try and save one. And that idea then to me is like, okay, so there's a burning building and you could go in. There are three children in there and you could go in and save one of the children. But you know what? You can't save them all, so let's just leave them all in there. Don't bother saving that one because you can't save them all. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. None of these arguments make any sense. And you can even see when you look at street activism, people realise that it makes no sense. Again, it's not my objective here to get you to totally change your diet. I know it isn't necessarily easy for some people to do so. But it's just crazy what's going on out there. Cheese has actually got something in it called quesomorphine, which is addictive as well, which is one of the reasons why people love cheese. So... You actually realise after you cut out cheese from your diet, after like maybe a month or so, you're like, that's really weird, I have no desire for cheese because you've broken the addiction, you know, it's like quitting smoking or something like that. And for me, the, the way that I see it as well is that it's a, if it's a, something that we have the ability to do, you know, people will be like, well, lions eat meat, and it's like, yeah, but lions are obligate carnivores. Humans are omnivores and always have been, you know. Another thing about that as well is people going, people saying, oh, well, it's what we've always eaten. Well, actually, no, what we used to eat was fruit and insects, basically. Why aren't you eating fruit and insects? People say to vegans, oh, well, why do you make vegan burgers that look like meat products? And it's like, well, we're not vegan because we don't like the taste. We're vegan because we don't like what it does to our bodies, the environment, and to the animals. And also, since when does a burger look like a cow? If, if that is a legitimate argument, then meat eaters need to specifically start shaping their food into the shape of the animals they killed to get it from. You have people as well who talk about things like almond milk because, for example, in, uh, in America, in California in particular, a lot of water is being used to grow in almonds. They have to ship in bees in huge numbers to produce them. And vegans generally don't eat uh, honey because it's an animal product. Again, there's no need to. And... Uh, I actually agree with that as well. I think that there is a big problem in California with almond production, so I try and, where possible, not use almond milk. I quite like oat milk. And uh, also, again, I try not to get Californian almonds where possible as well. But again, it's all about reducing the amount of impact you do on the environment, you know? Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on the arguments against it for too much longer. What I'm now going to talk about is some of the resources I would recommend if you're interested in learning more. We will start because we're on YouTube. We'll start with the YouTube channels. So I would say uh, Bosch TV. So they are two guys from the UK. They're actually up north from near Manchester. They do a lot of vegan recipes. They actually have a cookbook, the Bosch cookbook. Simple recipes, amazing food, all plants. What's actually good about this cookbook as well is that it's not necessarily a vegan cookbook or it doesn't promote itself as one it's just a cookbook to make good food it just happens that there are no animal products in it all you know so Bosch a great I would check out Earthling Ed he does a lot of street activism so he'll go in London or in America he'll stop people on the street he'll ask them questions and just record the conversations and that's where I've started to see a lot of these arguments come in so what's quite cool about Earthling Ed is that he used the Socratic method which basically relies on asking people questions so instead of just telling people you know you should do this you should do that it's more a question of you know do you think you should do this is that a good thing why do you do it and that's really helps to kind of draw people out because a lot of people just haven't thought about this kind of stuff before and there's a reason for that, it's because the dairy industry and the meat industries, they put huge amounts of money into lobbying. You have the ag-gag law in America, which basically makes it illegal to go onto a factory farm and share footage of it. So 
it, it happens in no other industry. It's crazy. And, you know, you think you have freedom of speech in America. No, you do not. And if you're an animal rights activist, you're quite often branded a terrorist. So, yeah, there's Earthling Ed. We have uh, Plant Based News. That's basically uh, does a lot of news about plant based stuff. It keeps you informed about new studies and stuff. There's uh, Mike the Vegan. He's very mathematical and study focused, so he'll look into, for example, recently he did a video on salt. Should we be eating salt? What does it do to our bodies? That kind of thing. Uh, so you're dating a vegan. That's a vegan and non-vegan couple where they do stuff. And there are others as well, but they, those are who spring to mind. If you've got Netflix or if you just want to Google it as well, there are loads of documentaries out there. So I'd recommend Earthlings, What the Health. Cowspiracy, that's a particularly good one if you're interested in the climate change. Speciesism as well, that's a movie. The idea there, as it sounds from the title, is that we talk a lot about sexism and racism and stuff, but we don't think about how we are speciesist to other animals. Farm to fridge, we have eye animal through the eyes of a pig. Meet the truth, our daily bread, plant pure nation, the animals film, that's from 1981. The Ghosts in Our Machine, Vegucated, and What You Eat Matters. Those are all ones I would recommend. So here we have Gristle from Factory Farms to Food Safety, thinking twice about the meat we eat. So this is edited by Moby with me and Park, but actually don't worry about it too much. They're not really in it that much. This is more a collection of different essays from different people on different topics. So we have Health by Brendan Brazier, Environment by Lauren Bush, Taxpayers by John Mackay, Animals by Wayne Purcell, Climate Change by Daniel Nirenberg and Meredith Niles. Children's Health by Sarah Kaberski and Toma Hagen. Workers by Christine Chavez and Julie Chavez Rodriguez. Communities by Paul and Phyllis Willis. Great name. Zoonotic Diseases by Michael Greger, MD. And Global Hunger by Francis Moore Lapp and Anna Lapp. And actually that's a good point that that's just brought me onto as well is that when there are factory farms nearby, it has really bad impacts on the local communities. It tends to make kids and stuff ill. There was one teacher in a school that said she spends her entire day just chasing flies because that's all she really feels like she can do and what she thinks can have the best impact actually on the kids' lives. And when you look at it, it does seem quite un-American to me. I mean, I know I'm not American, but it it's messed up how like these big companies move into places and then just screw over people's lives. They quite often use undocumented workers because that means they don't have a union, they can't complain. There are no speed limits involved in terms of the speed of production lines. So a factory farm can tell somebody to go from killing 10 chickens a minute to killing 20 chickens a minute and they just have to do that. They're expected to do that. And of course, by doing that, that increases the number of injuries there are as well. Taxpayer cost is another one. When you go and buy a burger from McDonald's for $5 or whatever, actually quite a lot of the reason why it only costs $5 is because it's subsidized by the government, including myself as a vegan, I still have to pay the British government subsidies for meat production, which is ridiculous, but not much I can do. We have Farmageddon in Pictures, The True Cost of Cheap Meat by Philip Limbury. So this shows you basically what's going on quite often. So these are piglets. They'll spend their entire lives indoors, unable to root or forage, for example. So this here shows you the amount of land that's needed to produce the feed for the number of chickens in one shed. So that's the shed up there. Then this is all the land that's used to grow the feed for them. It's where pigs are before they become your bacon. Not to mention that when they are killed humanely, which by the way, there is no way to kill something humanely, unless, you know, would it be humane for me to shoot you in the head? Probably not. Here we have Farm Again and the True Cost of Cheap Meat by Philip Limbury with Isabel Oakshot. So this is the same guy, guy who obviously did Farm Again in Pictures. And he's the CEO of Compassion and World Farming. They do actually have a YouTube channel that you can check out as well that does a lot of like exposés into the way that animals are treated. I don't think that charity goes far enough because they just want to abolish factory farming and they still think meat production is fine, which I don't know. It's a step in the right direction, I guess. Here we have David Kirby, Animal Factory, the looming threat of industrial pig, dairy and poultry farms to humans and the environment. And this is a really good one to read, I would say, if you're interested in the effect that it's having on people in America, basically. What happens when a factory farm decides to set up shop in your town? Because once they do, there's not much you can do against it because they'll just bribe local government officials to say yes and to approve it all. Anyway, and then we have Factory Farming by Andrew Johnson, which is probably the worst of the books I've read, but it's also very academic. The others are very much kind of public 
focused, you know. I mean, we have another pig on the back. So hopefully that's answered that question. I didn't do any planning for this video, really. I just took the books out that I wanted to talk about and uh, turned the camera on. But yeah, that is uh, that is why I'm vegan. So thank you, Mad Mystical Monk, aka Mad Misanthropy Books, for asking, because you know. Rule number one of being vegan is that you have to talk about it all the time. Although once you once you read stuff like this, it haunts you, and like you kind of need to talk about it because it's it's really fucked up. Like the scale of it as well. Like people like Todd the librarian, for example. I can imagine Todd, you know, raising chickens or a pig or something and eating, and, you know, killing it and eating it himself. Which you got to at least have a kind of respect for that. Like there's a big difference between doing that and just buying something from a supermarket shelf without putting any thought into how it gets there or the effects that it's having on, you know, everyone. I mean, I think that's one of the big problems for me is that actually, if not, if more, if more people don't go vegan, then the planet doesn't have a future, especially with increased population growth and, you know, countries like India taking on American factory farming methods and stuff. If you look at China as an emerging market, if everybody in China ate the same amount of meat that people in America do, the world is fucked like seriously is fucked it can't it can't can't sustain that level of meat production it's fine though elon musk will save us all and we're going to go and live on mars which by the way if you noticed in uh, the martian mark watney he lived on a vegan diet there he ate potatoes anyway on that note thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments if any of this surprised you if you've learned anything that you didn't know uh yeah maybe i'll get some hate comments who knows but uh, yeah, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video where I will be talking more about books and less about animals. Goodbye.